Hello everyone. I am Bhagadharani. In the previous lecture, we learned about charges and static electricity. Do you all remember how the neutral cone acquired charges? Yes, ma'am, by rubbing the comb on our dry hair. Yeah, that's correct. But there are also few other methods of charging a conductor which will be discussed in today's lecture. In order to understand the process of charging, we have to understand the structure of body. All bodies are made up of extremely small, indestructible bits of matter called atoms. An atom consists of a nucleus surrounded by electrons. The center part of the atom is the nucleus and the particles revolving around the nucleus are called electrons. The nucleus consists of protons and neutrons. The protons are positively charged while the electrons are negatively charged and the neutrons are neutral. The whole atom is neutral because it has equal number of protons and electrons. Here is an example. This is an atomic structure of helium atom. As you can see there are two protons and two electrons. Thus the atom is neutral. There are three methods of charging. They are rubbing or friction, induction and contact. So now let's discuss about charging by friction. Here as you can see in the picture there is a polythene rod and a fur. When the polythene rod is rubbed with the fur, the polythene rod acquires electrons from the fur and becomes negatively charged. Whereas the fur gives off its electrons and becomes positively charged. This process of charging is called charging by friction or charging by rubbing. But ma'am, why does the electrons leave the fur? Why can't the electrons leave the polythene rod? That's a good question. Different materials have different affinity for electrons. Some hold on to their electrons tighter than others. When a material has greater affinity for electrons, it holds electrons stronger and often gain electrons by friction and become negative. When a material has less affinity for electrons, it holds the electrons weaker and often lose more electrons by friction and become positive. So here is a chart showing the electron affinity of materials. As you can see in the picture, PVC has a higher electron affinity whereas glass has a lower electron affinity. Comparing to PVC, fur has a lesser electron affinity. That's why the electrons of fur leave uh, to PVC while rubbing. Now let's discuss about charging by induction. You can induce a charge in a neutral object by moving a charged object close to it. Induction creates a temporary and opposite charge in that other object with no contact. This is considered temporary because no electrons are transferred and neutrality returns when the closed charged object is removed. As you can see in the picture, when a negatively charged rod is brought near a neutral sphere, the side of the sphere facing the negatively charged rod acquires positive charge, whereas the side of the sphere facing away from the negatively charged rod acquires a negative charge. As you could see in the picture, when the positively charged rod is brought near the neutral sphere, negative charges are induced on the sphere facing the positively charged rod, whereas positive charges are induced on the other side of the sphere. From both of these pictures, we could understand that when we try charging a neutral body by using the process of induction, opposite charges are produced on the neutral body. Now let's move on to the topic charging by contact. Conduction occurs on a neutral object when a charged object is in contact with it. During conduction, the same charge is created in a neutral object. 
Electrons will transfer from a negative object to a neutral object making it negative. Electrons will be attracted by a positive object taking electrons from a neutral object making it positive. Charging by conduction is considered permanent since electrons move to new object until that object is grounded. So as you can see in the picture, when a negatively charged rod is brought in contact with a neutral sphere, it transfers some of its electrons to the neutral sphere making it negative. So these are the different methods of charging a body. Ma'am, but how will the charged body become neutral? Like I said already by grounding. Grounding is the removal of a charge by producing a conductive path to the ground. The earth both accepts and gives electrons to neutralize objects. When a negatively charged object is grounded, in order to neutralize the object, some of its electrons move on to the ground. In a similar way, when a positively charged object is grounded, some of the electrons from the ground uh, is transferred to the positively charged object in order to neutralize the object. So, in this uh, lecture, we have learnt about the different methods of charging a body. Thank you for watching. Do subscribe the channel for more updates.